Welcome back to our session. We're still with me as the CEO and co-founder of Daily Wire, Jeremy Boring. I'm joined by my pack, the author and socialist Grace Blakely, talked to the contributor Paul Ron Adrian, and the journalist and author Hilary Freeman, who I'll come to all three of you in a moment. Jeremy, I just want to talk to you, just pivot slightly. I read a column for the New York Post yesterday about this kind of farcical situation in America where universities like Harvard, who were literally just named the worst school in America for failure to exercise free speech on campus, now saying that the reason they allowed their students to all sign this absurdly offensive letter in the immediate aftermath of these attacks, effectively siding with Hamas, uh, was because of their devotion to free speech. And the reason I think it's relevant for you to answer that is I know that you, as a company, you're producing your own children's content to counter the left and woke propaganda and so on. So it comes to me there's a, there's a neat link here. But what do you make of what's been happening in these universities in America? Well, I think that the universities are in many ways victims uh, of their own rhetoric. And one of the dangerous things to do in life is to say things out loud because pretty soon you'll have to defend them. And soon after that, you'll start to believe them. And Harvard has been preaching this sort of intersectional hierarchy now uh, for at least a decade and maybe more. The problem with the intersectional hierarchy is that someone has to be on the bottom in the, in the sort of name of equality or fostering some sort of better sense of equality, they've created a situation where, you know, people who they see as having been historically in places of power now are at the very bottom and have been completely dehumanized. And one of the funny quirks is they think that that is sort of anti-majoritarian, anti-patriarchy. You know, in America, it's anti-Christian white male in particular, and that it protects minorities. But of course, one of the smallest minorities in the world is the Jews. And unfortunately, in every other way, they seem to fit more in positions of power. They tend to excel uh, academically. They tend to excel in business. They're disproportionately represented in media, in education, in science, you know, in, in traditionally white collar and governmental type roles. And so the intersectional hierarchy being preached by these schools has left them in a position where, you know, the most probably hard done by minority uh, of the 20th and 21st century somehow has been dehumanized by them. They don't know how to get out of the way of their own yeah, bad quite thinking extraordinary. on this issue. There was actually a professor at Cornell who was caught on camera doing this. I think we have it. Hamas has shifted the balance of power. Yeah. Yeah. Hamas has punctured the illusion of invincibility. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they've done. Yeah. It was exhilarating. Yeah. It was exhilarating. It was energizing. Yeah. Exhilarating and energizing. That's a professor at a top American university. I, mean, I found that completely shocking. A, that he would have that thought process, but B, you would be so brazenly free to do it in public like that. Well, sure. I mean, if what that professor had said instead is that uh, gender and biological sex are inextricably linked, he'd be out on the streets by now and never work again. Instead, he says that it's exhilarating to watch children murdered in their homes because of some sort of bizarre academic theory about power structures. Mm. Here's the thing. Strength does not necessarily connote virtue, but strength also does not necessarily connote a lack of virtue. Mm. Weakness does not confer upon a person virtue any more than weakness confers upon a person a lack of virtue. There are wonderful Jews in the world, and there are terrible Jews in the world. There are wonderful Muslims in the world, and there are terrible Muslims in the world. There are wonderful people in positions of strength. I think the West has done a relatively extraordinary job compared to other societies throughout human history. And there are terrible people in positions of power. We need only look to the ruling regime in China, among others, to know that. And Jeremy, what we happens know, when we you know engage that a lot in this these... collectivism is you forget about the individual. Right. We know a lot of this obviously starts from childhood. You as a company have decided to take on this, what you see as the indoctrination by the woke left of kids. Tell me just briefly about that. Yeah. Well, I think that one of the things that we at The Daily Wire feel is that childhood uh, has been sort of distorted. On one hand, we have this university system, as you were just discussing, that infantilizes adults. We refer to 23-year-olds as college kids, and we treat them like that, like kids who aren't responsible, who have no agency, who can't be held accountable for their own actions. On the other hand, we have actual children, actual kids, and instead of letting them live in a world of imagination and adventure and joy and wonder, we want to use them as political props. We want to march them in our rallies. Uh, we want to hold them up as some sort of symbol of the struggle against you know entrenched power structures or whatever the, the in vogue terms are. And what we believe at The Daily Wire is actually, why don't we let adults be adults? 
including 23 year olds. And why don't we let children be children? Mm. And so we've launched this initiative, Bent Key, which is our new company, our new app. And it's just entertainment for kids. It's not overtly political. We're overtly political as a company, of course, but our content at Bent Key is not. It really is just a place where kids can sit down, actually enjoy entertaining content. And parents don't have to worry about having these sort of destructive ideas. Of yeah, the moment you know, Jeremy, I've got four children. kids and I, I say hurrah to that. Honestly, Thank I do. You. I'm sick and tired of these kids getting grabbed by people who think they know what's best for what these kids should be thinking and doing. It's, it's ridiculous. Uh, I've got to leave it there, Jeremy. You've been brilliant. Thank you very much indeed for rolling with the, the punches earlier. Uh, you came on to talk about this and we then brought you in to respond to what uh, Bassam Yusuf said. I think, I think that was important. And I, I really thank appreciate you, you coming on the show. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. OK. Uh, Hilary, welcome. First time okay. we've had you on. Um, Bassam Yusuf, very fired up. I mean, a lot of people who are pro-Palestinian historically are very fired up about this. Tonight, as we came on air, this as yet unverified in terms of who's responsible, but it's, it, 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 the Hamas are claiming uh, that this is uh, an Israeli airstrike on a hospital that may have killed 500 people. It, it comes back to proportion for me. What is the correct response to the outrage of October the 7th? I don't know what the correct response is, but I don't believe that Israel would be stupid enough to bomb a hospital the day before Biden Can I just arrives. say, Israel has released a statement already saying that they warned civilians to evacuate the hospital prior to... That has been to... Be not true. That's been, that's been taken down by Al Jazeera already. It wasn't true. It was There's a lot of stuff flying around. Yeah. There's a lot of people putting videos they claim are Hamas misfiring a rocket. Others are saying it's definitely Israeli. Yeah. I think we need to wait for absolute yeah. clarity on this. What is indisputable is a hospital has been hit and yeah. it appears hundreds and hundreds yeah. of people have died. Yeah. It's, it feels to me, with President Biden arriving tomorrow, this is a bit of a game changer. Yeah, yeah, which is why I don't believe it was deliberate because it just seems, it just doesn't make sense that they would do But that. is it the kind of thing which you would say that if you're bombing the hell out of Gaza and this happens, is collateral damage and you have to suck it up? I don't think Israel has ever targeted hospitals. It would always avoid hospitals if it possibly could. So, no, of course, I don't think that it's good to... I mean, to... Israel has already targeted hospitals by saying that it was shutting off power and water, which resulted in hospitals overflowing with patients that were effectively untreatable. That was considered a war crime. Many people have called that out as a war clear, crime. Grace, just to be clear, the Reuters news agency is now reporting comments from the Israeli military saying its intelligence shows a Palestinian Islamic Jihad group is responsible for the hospital attack at a rocket barrage from Gaza intended for Israel passed near the Gaza hospital and is hit. We don't know. Yet. We don't know. So let's, let's, gonna, let's, let's just let's just of the let's back. talk about what we do know, yes. shall we? Yes. Okay. We know that the Israeli state has committed war crimes. We know that they have instituted a basically a regime of collective punishment. We know now that they've used white phosphorus in uh, civilian areas, which is considered a war crime. We know that this comes on the back of the brutalization for many, many years now of the Palestinian people. We also know that over Hamas... A, over a, oh, hang on. Hamas. We also By know the Israeli state, 6,400 6, Palestinians have died in Grace, conversations we also with Israeli know, troops since 2008, Grace, including 1,400 we also, children. We also know that Hamas just perpetrated one of the worst yeah. terror attacks in modern history and the Quite. worst attack on Jewish people since the Holocaust. And so and, I can answer your and, question, Peter. Yes. I can answer your question about proportionality because international law tells us what the answer is in relation to proportionality. Mm. It tells us that we have a right to defend ourselves. Mm. It tells us that we have a right, whilst defending ourselves, to ensure that the outcome is ultimate peace. Mm. Mm. And that is what, uh, as far as I'm concerned, we have not witnessed, even in the minute that we've well, but, been on. And, we know and, that and, is... if, and if we were to ensure that the rule of law was applied, which is what I hope mm. Joe Biden is going to be um, uh, reinforcing when he visits, and when Rishi Sunak visits. I hope that that's what they're going to reinforce. Right, this is quite clearly, though, not what many people within the Israeli government want. One Israeli minister said that he wanted to unleash a second Nakba. Do you guys know what that means? Yeah. You know what the Nakba was, right? Mm -hmm. The uh, official position of the Israeli state for a long time has been there was no Nakba, there was no catastrophe, this didn't happen. This foundational act of violence that really led up in many ways to the conflict we're seeing today. Also did not important happen. to know, this Israeli Israel's, minister has said Israel's was Minister a of National Nakba. Security, uh, Ben Gavir, says that the only thing that should enter Gaza until the hostages are released are hundreds of tons of explosives from the Israeli Air Force, not an ounce of humanitarian aid. Now, that strikes me as a statement which doesn't care about international law. Maybe. 
clearly. Right. Well, Cle Ben Gavir is appalling, and but isn't that the problem? Isn't that the problem too. Netanyahu has? He's packed yes. the cabinet yes. for political self-expediency. Yes. He's packed the cabinet with a bunch of right-wing headbangers to say stuff. They've been saying stuff like this for a long time this yes, year. Absolutely, and that is a part of the reason why this has happened. Um, mm. But. You can't blame Israel again for what Hamas did. It's again, if people but try to justify. You can't blame Palestinians, it. all Palestinians, for what Hamas has done. No, and that can't. is what many actually we've seen now. IDF soldiers, we've seen people saying this is a war with Palestinian civilians. Do you agree that Hamas should be removed? Pierce, Pierce, you know my answer to that question, and it's so frustrating the way that whenever anyone comes on what these shows the and talks about the horrendous answer? loss of life that has been inflicted on Palestinians for many, many years, should there's Hamas this idea. Be there's this idea that you can ask this question. Should we condone Hamas? Should we condone Hamas? No, I didn't ask you that. I said... Hamas? And what that does I just is it you, should breaks, Hamas be removed? It breaks... Of course Hamas should be removed. Okay. Nobody seriously doubts so how that. how do you remove them? But as them? soon as you respond Grace. to the question, Grace. I said, Israel has committed Grace. war crimes, and you respond by saying, should, no, should we remove no, Hamas? No, no, Grace. The implication if we all agree that Hamas should Hamas be removed, my question is, and how do you remove yeah, them? How? What do you, OK, well, what do we know about Hamas? We know that actually Netanyahu has said in the past that he wanted to strengthen Hamas mm. because that was the only way that he could ever get rid of the Palestinian state. He has mm. said that outright. We now have evidence that he knew about these terror attacks. Shin Bet that, that, knew that, about these terror attacks. We have, well, we, we have who, evidence who that Shin Bet said this was an immense intelligence failure and that was there was intelligence that suggested that this was going to happen. There's no, there's no there question. There is no Netanyahu way that not know that would allow this Hillary. to happen to his people. There is absolutely no way. That's a conspiracy theory. There Hillary, is, the ask, head of Shin Bet has come out and said this was an extraordinarily you, intelligence Hillary, failure. As a Jewish person, yeah. this has been a nightmare 10 days. Yes. But as a Palestinian person right now in Gaza, they're going through... If they're an innocent Palestinian civilian, they are sure. going through and utter I, hell too. And I, and Do you I feel, feel empathy for them I too? feel absolute empathy for them. And all the Jewish people I know, nobody wants mm. Palestinian people to suffer. Nobody does. We want to get rid of Hamas and we want our hostages back. Okay. And so to answer Piers's question, how to remove, remove Hamas, is it going to happen by a ground war? Is that I don't how think... It, is is he, that I think that, that is the only way you can possibly do it, but the consequences yeah. could be disastrous. Exactly. Yeah. We've got to leave it there. We've run out of time. Thank you all very much indeed.